And now, The Hunters, starring tonight, Mr. Victor Jolly. Yes, I'm a hunter, and I'm hunting the most dangerous and tricky game in the world, man. Since the dawn of time, human beings have loved the chase, the hunt. Every Sunday night at this time, the Columbia Broadcasting System brings you the greatest chase stories of all time. Stories of the hunter and the hunted, from the annals of history, from the world of adventure fiction, from yesterday's headlines. Tonight's story is Cornell Woolrich's exciting tale of suspicion and murder, You Take Ballistics. And tonight's hunter is the star of stage and screen, Victor Jory. I am a hunter, in a manner of speaking. My name is Harvey, Inspector Harvey of Scotland Yard. The hunted man acts very much like the hunted beast. In the case of Clarence Coleman, for example, the hunt was in the stalking phase. This was no chase, yet. I knew where the murderer was hiding, and I was waiting for him to run. Only he wasn't exactly hiding, nor did he seem to be inclined to run. And the waiting had begun to become tedious. By this time, it was night, rather late. I walked down towards the building from the opposite side of the street, like I had a dozen times before that day. This time, I had to count the doorways. I knew that Sergeant Pass was on watch in the tenth one down from the corner. I knew he was there, but I also knew I'd never see him. It was too dark, and Cass knew his job too well. Has he made any moves yet? Hmm? Oh, it's you, sir. No, sir. Not a move. How about the rear? No, sir. Peters is covering that. He'd warn us. Anyway, I'm sure he's still up there. Every now and then you can see his shadow against the blind. There. Uh, see? Uh-huh. What shall we do, Inspector? It's my guess he's not going to run for it. I think he's set for the night. Shall we, uh, stay here like this? No. This isn't getting us anywhere. We'd better take him in now. Come on up with me and we'll see what we've got. Yes, sir. It's good to stretch. My knees were beginning to give way, sir. <laughs> yes, I know. I had my share of stakeouts myself. Eh, fortunately, it's warm tonight. That's a help. Yes, that's always a help. You know what I think, Inspector? No, what? I think that chap's waiting for something. Or for someone. Like who? Us. Mm. He's a brainy chap, eh? Clever. Very clever. I don't like it. Yes, sir, gentlemen. Coleman. Clarence Coleman. Take us up, please. Yes. <sighs> this has been a long day. Mm, I need to shave. Mm, it's not very noticeable, sir. How long has he been living here? Who? Oh. Coleman. Oh, him. About two years, I'd say. Uh-huh. Second door to your left. Well, thank you. We know the way. Mm, what a hole. Inspector. Shall I, uh... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't believe he'll give us any trouble. He's too sharp for that. Are you Clarence Coleman? That's right. We're from Scotland Yard. You don't say. You want to come in, or do you just want to talk to me out here? We want to talk to you at the yard. First, we want to come in. Come right here. Nobody's stopping you. Look around, Cass. Yes, sir. I suppose you've got a search warrant. <laughs> I suppose you've got a witness to say that we don't. <laughs> Go ahead, look. I just want you to know I'm not so dumb, that's all. Oh, we're not underestimating you. You're clever enough. I was doing a crossword puzzle. You don't mind, do you? Go ahead. I wanted to get that one down before I forget. You find it, Cass? No, sir. You want it done? Me? Why, yes. Where is it? Tell him to look in the bottom drawer of the chest in there under my winter underwear. You hear that, Cass? Yes, I've got a permit for it, too. You fired it recently? Right, I fired it recently. Uh, here it is, Inspector. Careful, you don't rub off any fingerprints. I told you he was clever. Maybe too clever. Thirty-eight. That huh? one shell gone. Only last night. Why should I lie to you? You're going to give me the nitrate test anyway, isn't it? You give me the yard? Only last night. 
Right into Edmund Lombard's body. Wrong, right into the floor here. Oh, you've got all the answers, Alan. I only know what I know. Can't do better than that for my own brother. If you fire the gun into the floor, where's the hole? You see that little scout rug? Just kick it aside. See it? I can do better than a hole. You dig in with your pen knife, you can probably get the slug. <laughs> now, what are you doing that for, Cap? <laughs> Our friend here's pulling your leg. Maybe. <laughs> but we better have the slug just the same. Inspector. All right. You, Coleman, yeah. take your hands out of your pockets and get your favorite hat and start moving towards the door. You're coming with us. I'm off, Inspector. I'm off. You get a cash. Yes, sir. Thirty-eight, all right. Oh, is it? Am I under arrest? If you must have a name for it, no, not yet. You're just a guest of Scotland Yard for the rest of the night. <laughs> I hope the bed's comfortable. Take him downstairs, Cass. I want to talk to our lift friend for a bit. Right, Baker. Come along, you. Step right, in, sir. Uh, thank you. Tell me, um, did a gun go off anywhere in this building last night? A gun? Mm -hmm. Now, let me see. Yes, I believe he's did. Who's? Coleman's? Mr. Coleman's. The people downstairs complained, so I went up. He fired it into the floor by mistake, he said. He was quite alone. Is anything the matter, sir? Oh, I would say so. Just a little thing called murder. <laughs> Yes, murder, the motive for the manhunt. The hunted man whom you've just met is not only inspired by the instinct for self-preservation, but also by an evil desire to outwit the law. And these two forces bring out in him not only every wile of the desperate, primitive beast, but also every trick of the fertile human brain. The hunter, then, has his work cut out for him. We continue the chase now as Victor Jory, in the role of Inspector Harvey of Scotland Yard, the hunter... Matches wits with Clarence Coleman, the hunted. In this first of the new CBS series, The Hunters. I've been a member of Scotland Yard for some years now. And I brought in my share of criminals, big and small. Yet I never made an arrest that looked better and that I liked less than this slippery chap Coleman. I had everything. I had to make the arrest. And yet I knew it was going to turn sour the moment I walked into his flat. And a sour murder charge is something an old hand like me doesn't care for. We didn't take him down to the yard. Instead, we took him to a police station in the West End. And we didn't charge him. We simply left him in the black back room to... Mm, to stew a bit. Chief Inspector Lettinger, my superior, arrived there about ten minutes later. You brought him in, Harvey? Yes, sir. He's in back. Here's his gun. Claims it went off on the floor last night by mistake. And he beat us to the paraffin test, huh? Mm. Well, he could have arranged it that way after he killed Lombard. He could have. Here's a slug, sir. Oh, 38. Suppose you turn those over to ballistics. Yes, sir. Any report on the one they dug out of Lombard's body? Probably on its way now. Who are those two chances? The night lift operator who took him up to Lombard's apartment, and the night attendant at a small sandwich shop half a block away. You recognize him? Pardon. Well, let's go to work. Sergeant. Yes, sir. We'll want to surprise him with these witnesses. The one buzz, send him the lift man. Two buzzes, the other chap. Yes, sir. You think he'll break, sir? You? No. All right, Coleman. Sit over there. Right, sir. Perhaps we better put some light on him, O'Farrell. Yes, sir. All right, Coleman. Suppose you tell us what you did last night. Uh, beginning when? When you left your flat. Well, I went out about nine o'clock and I walked over to the Edgware Road. There's a tobacconist there. I made a phone call. To whom? To Edmund Lombard. So you did contact Lombard? Why, certainly. Did I say different? Go ahead. Well, do you know what business Lombard was in? Suppose you tell us. I don't mind. He collected bets on the horses. Only the long shots he wouldn't turn in. They never come in anyway, so uh, who knows the difference? Only this one time I received a tip on a filly that did come in. A 20 to 1. 
Lombard couldn't pay off and he disappeared. I just caught up with him last night. On the phone, I told him I want my money and I told him to meet me in an hour. Did he meet you? I didn't give him a chance. I went up to his place. You went up to his place? That's right. There's no use for me to lie. I know you've got witnesses to place me up to. So you did go up to his place? Yes. Yeah. He was already packing. He was getting ready to run away again. He kind of laughed and said, uh, you can't blame the chap for trying. And I said, I want my money. Okay, he says, you win. And he asked me for a receipt. So I can't come at him again. Fair enough, so I write one up for him on the hotel station. Go on. And let's hear how good you can make it. Well, that's all. He started to unpack, thinking he might just as well stay where he was now. And I left. So that's how it was. But are you sure you didn't leave out anything? No. I... Why did you leave out the fact that you killed him? Because he belonged out, because I didn't. You didn't have a gun with you when you went up there. You can bet your last shilling I did. Why'd you take a gun if you didn't plan to shoot him? So he wouldn't pull one on me. You think a chap like Eddie Lombard is going to cost up 500 quid just like that? Unless he has to? Don't you lie to us now. When we bring you in here, we want the truth. You shot him first and collected your money afterwards. No. And then you wrote out your receipt to a dead man. That's no. how it happened, isn't it? No. Answer me. Isn't it? Oh. Ah. Yes. Yes, sir. Never mind those other witnesses. We won't need them. Go in here and get his hand. Yes, sir. All right, now bring him out of it. He seems to have a rather delicate constitution. Come on. Come on, you. Get up there. Yeah, now, that's better. Now, why did you tell the night man that Lombard was staying and not to bother about his luggage? Because I was afraid he'd go up there. Lombard might think it was me again and take a shot at him. Because he was dead in there, and you wanted to get clear of the building before he was found. If I did, I didn't go very far. I stayed in the sandwich shop down the street for 15 or 20 minutes. Why did you take the money? Why did you take it from him after you killed him? The money he gave me? I put it in the bank first thing this morning. Well, take over, Cass. Come on, Hubby. If I would stayed in there much longer, I'd have been tempted to hurt him. Now, see what I mean? Yes, I do. But how is it that no one heard the shots? People next door were out. Down below, they were asleep. I don't like it. You notice how he beats us to the punch every time? We have witnesses for everything except the killing, which seems to indicate that we have nothing but circumstantial evidence. It wouldn't stand up in court five minutes. Well, maybe the ballistics people will tie it up for us. Ah, uh, maybe. What's the matter, Harvey? Don't you believe in ballistics? I do. But you heard the chap. He's got every other angle covered. He wouldn't be likely to slip up on anything as obvious as ballistics. Don't you think he's guilty? I don't think. I know he's guilty of sin. I went back to Coleman's flat. I dislike this part of any job, but it's elementary when you're following a trail and there's always a slight chance that it may turn up something. So it has to be done. It's one of the processes of the manhunt. Nothing came of it. Just a lot of junk. In the living room, items. The crossword puzzle he'd been working on and the pencil stub and the stub of the cigarette he'd been smoking and the package he came out of. The bathroom. Items. The usual assortment in the medicine cabinet and 15 rusty razor blades under the bathtub. The kitchen. Items. Two empty whiskey bottles. The bedroom. Items. A chest full of linen and three suits in the wardrobe. One of them was the great plaid he'd been wearing the night he called on Lombard. There was nothing in the pocket but a Canadian penny, a faded snapshot of a faded blonde, and a book of cigarette papers. These latter items from his pocket I put in the regulation brown envelope, for no very good reason, and went back to the station. Chief Inspector Lettinger was still there and close to the end of his patience. Get anything? If I did, I don't know it. How's he doing? Much better than we are, thank Only so far, though. You're still sure of him, Harvey? I was never so sure of an arrest in my life. I see. Well, I decided to let it go through on circumstantial evidence. Ballistics will be certain to match his gun to the bullet that killed Lombard, and that should be enough to do it without anything else. I don't know. I say, what are you driving at? Yes. Yes, this is letting out. And it's about time. I've been waiting for this report. Yes. Huh? All right. Ballistics. 
Coleman's gun was a thirty-eight. I know that. You know that. Well, then maybe you know that the bullet that they took out of Lombard was a thirty-two. So now what do you know? That does it. Indeed, and what does it do? It proves he's our man. I'm convinced of it. Oh, that's fine. Except that the court isn't likely to convict on your word alone. Especially when ballistics disagrees with you. I'm not telling you different, but ballistics is. It's a case of theory against fact, and ballistics don't lie. Are you setting yourself up above ballistics? You take ballistics, I'll take human nature. That doesn't lie either. You mean he did it with a thirty-two and then threw it away? You're wrong. I know he didn't. Otherwise, he wouldn't have shot that slug into the floor. But the slug in the floor was a thirty-eight. Chief, I've had occasion to call on important members of Parliament, even lords of the realm. And they, even they, got a little pale and discomforted when I said Scotland Yard. But not this chap. He was waiting for us. He was calm. He was doing crossword puzzles. He was too calm. He's too clever. He's got everything covered. He's been ahead of us all the way. Now, he's our man, I tell you. He's our man. Well, if he's our man, you haven't proved it. And I must warn you, it'll take more than words to convict him. I know that. Then do something about it. How long will I have? Tomorrow morning. But I can't wait. We can't hold him forever without charging him. No, tomorrow morning? What can I do at this time of night, Chief? Give me a fair chance and make it noon. All right, noon. I'm scratching it for you. Thanks. Harvey, you're not concealing anything from me now, are you? I wish I were. I don't know a thing more than you do, Chief. I'm just convinced we're right, that's all. Uh-huh. I think I'll take another look at him before I go. Look here, Coleman. We know you did it. Why don't you make it easy for yourself? Yeah, make it easy for you? You mean I know you anything for a pinch? What do you care if you got the wrong trap? All right. Skip it, Cass. You can leave him alone now. Have you got something new, Inspector? Possibly. The bullet that killed Lombard was a thirty-two. What? Yes, Coleman's gun here is a thirty-eight. <laughs> but take him to his cell and let him try our beds. We'll probably have to turn him loose in the morning. Morning? What's the matter with tonight? What's the matter? Don't you like it here? All right, dear chappie. But you'll have a sweet case of false arrest on your end by morning. Now, you remember that, Inspector, when you're a sergeant again. Oh, I won't forget you, Coleman. You're too smart. A uh, cigarette? I've got my own. Oh, go ahead. Have one. I wouldn't take a smoke from a copper if it was the last one before I die. You may have a chance to prove that one day. Will I now? You will. When you go to the gallows. That sounded good, but I wasn't too certain. They say every criminal makes at least one mistake, but well, I couldn't be too certain of that either. All I was certain of was that he'd done it and that I had to keep hunting for a way to prove it. First, I went back up to his apartment again. I went over the place with a fine-tooth comb. Nothing new. Then, I thought of that suit in the wardrobe, and I got it out and went over it inch by inch. I turned the pockets inside out. And right there was where I found something that gave me an idea. Or maybe, maybe it was what I didn't find that I should have. I went out to Coleman's kitchen and made a pot of tea and sat down to think. And the more I thought, the better I liked it. It might not mean a thing. It might not even be possible. But it was all I had. The next step was the yard, headquarters, and the pistol range in the basement. By the time I got there, it was daylight. At a quarter to seven, I was waiting outside that tobacconist shop on Edgware Road where Coleman had made his phone call to Lombard. It was run by a small chap named Truhawk. We'd questioned him before. However, this was different. The shop wasn't open yet. But finally, after what seemed at least an hour and a half, I saw Truhawk come puffing down the street. <laughs> well, Inspector... Yeah, it's a real early bird, eh? <laughs> You're late. Late? <laughs> what time do you want the shop to open? In the middle of the night? <laughs> uh, let's go inside. I want to ask you a few questions, eh? Oh, more questions. Didn't you already ask me everything but my grandmother's middle name? Well, that's the point. I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I came back. Yeah, sure now, what? Well, about this Coleman... When he was here that night... I see he telephones from the box back there, but how can I hear what he says from way up here? Well, I don't care about that now. 
He used to buy a cigarette from you, though. You said that That's he... right. Every day, almost. Any particular brand? I certainly always the same for two years. These, um... Yes, these here. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Always machined-made cigarettes, huh? Always. Why not? What did he buy from you the night he was in here phoning? Well, the same, why not? You're sure he didn't buy... these? Oh, wait. Yes. Now, if I hadn't seen them in your hand, I wouldn't ever remember. Cigarette papers. For a change, he said to cut down expenses. Did he buy any loose tobacco to go with them? Let me see now. No, I don't... He didn't ask me, so I thought he'd got some already. Ah. <laughs> All right. You can give me some now. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> I say, uh, what is it all of a sudden with you, Inspector? You look like you just swallowed the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> You're all right, Dad. And I'm going to arrange some things for you. <laughs> is it so? What? Why, to be a witness of the nice big murder trial, free. <laughs> back to the police station. Now that the hunt was nearly over, except for the kill, I suddenly felt tired. Tired as an old foxhound at the end of the chase. I tried breakfast, but that didn't help much. So I went on over to the station. Chief Inspector Lettinger was right on deck and cranky as ever. But I could see he was worried. We'd held this chap nearly 24 hours and His Majesty's courts don't favor false arrests. Well, I hope you've got something. Where have you been all night? You look like you slept on the park bench. I didn't sleep anyway. I've just been doing some hunting. I hope you bagged something. Otherwise, Coleman's next move is out. His next move is arraignment after what I'm going to show you. Oh, excellent. I'm just in the mood for lantern slide. Shall we have him in? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, bring him in. Yes, sir. Now, first. First, I'd like you to watch how he rolls a cigarette. Oh, what are we doing? Pain parlor games. Just watch him, chief. That's all. And remember, I found these cigarette papers in the pocket of his suit. The suit he wore the night he went to see Lombard. Are you suggesting he gassed him to death with cheap tobacco? Here he is, Inspector. Uh, good morning. You woke me up just to move me to another ride out. Why don't you get wise to yourself? You know you're going to have to charge me or turn me loose sooner or later. All right, enough of that. We're turning you loose. All we want you to do is sign a waiver that nothing has happened to you here. Why well, I may mean, I sign nothing? Ah, now, take it easy, Clarence. We got the chap who did it. You've nothing to worry about. We just don't want any suits for false arrest, that's all. You took the words right out of my mouth, Copper, because my first stop after here is a solicitor. Oh, now, wait a minute now. Suppose we talk this over, eh? Smoke? Uh, not one of them things that... Well, you smoke these, don't you? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Here's some tobacco. Go ahead, Roll one. Mm. Thanks. That's not the way. I'm a, I'm a little out of practice. A little out of practice, he says. It doesn't look to me as if he'd ever rolled one before in his life. Does it you, Chief? All right, but you can't hang a man for that. Just the same. He bought these cigarette papers the night he went to see Lombard at the tobacconist where he phoned where he bought all his cigarettes. The first time he ever bought any. And no tobacco to go with them. And not a shred of loose tobacco in any of his pockets. Now, why do you suppose he bought those cigarette papers that night? You're telling it, Harvey. I'm listening. Are you listening, Coleman? Yeah, you're talking in your sleep. I'll tell you why he bought them. Better than that. I'll show you. Loan me a gun a minute, will you, Chief? Yeah. Ah, 38. Right. The same caliber as Coleman's gun. Right. Now, here's a 32 caliber bullet. The same caliber as the one that killed Lombard. Can I see it? I know a 32 when I see it. All right. We take the 38 bullets out of your gun. Now we take this 32 bullets and about three of these cigarette papers. Double them over. Wrap them around the bullet. See how snug that 32 fits in your 38 gun now. Uh, uh, now yeah. watch how a 38 gun will fire a 32 bullet. I'll put it in the baseboard over there. That's ballistics, Chief. How'd you like it? Ballistics? Ballistics? Oh, you take ballistics. I'll take human nature every time. Three months later, Coleman went to the gallows, as you must have read in your newspapers. It wasn't a very spectacular case, and they didn't waste any space telling you about it. Nor 
Did they mention whether Coleman took a cigarette from a copper before he died? Well, I don't know whether he did or not either. But I do know that this case demonstrated the imagination, the patience, the relentless attention to detail required when a man hunts the most dangerous game of all, man. Thank you, Victor Jory, for playing the first hunter in our new series, The Hunters. Tonight's script for The Hunters was based on Cornell Woolrich's famous short story, and with music by Lud Gluskin, was produced and directed by Tony Leader. The Hunters. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.